Right, so the first exercise we're going to look at is the squat. The most basic form of which is a body weight squat. So with the squat, the main areas it's going to work is the entirety of the lower body mainly. So you can get your quads working, your hamstrings, your glutes, right? And later on when you load it with a bar, you can get some more core involvement, ab muscles, lower back, um, and also the upper back as well. So the first one, the body weight squat. Um, what's important is to figure out what is the best squat stance for you. What squat stance allows you to get as low as you can with the best back position possible. So that can vary from a very narrow toes forward squat or to the other extreme is a quite a wide toes out squat. You never really want to get your toes to go past 30 degrees necessarily and um, obviously when you're pointing them forward you don't want them coming in too much. So any, any range of that you have to figure out what's the best for you. So I was going for an in between, so a little bit of toe out, you know about shoulder width with the heels and then just coming down. So with the depth some people will struggle to get the full range of motion. Right, so when, if you're struggling to get full range of motion, sometimes you might end up leaning a lot because you're feeling when you're coming low. But it's important to stay fairly upright, not so much you arch your back, but a nice neutral spine position. So that is the most basic form of the squat you can do. And then from there, the next step is to maybe load it at the front because that's the easiest way to load it by holding a weight at the front. So you could use kettlebells, dumbbells, plates. I'll just grab a plate to show you here. So again, just holding it in front, fairly close to the body so you don't fatigue your shoulders. And again, I'm just taking my normal stance, about uh, shoulder width to the heels, slight toe out, and going down. So once you've got load in your hands now, and on top of the body, you need to make sure that you do keep that neutral spine position. Notice how the hips are going back a little bit, the knees are going forward a little bit, at the same time to initiate the movement. And the next step from that could be trying to use a bar. Right, so when you're using the bar to squat, it's important that you figure out what position you're going to go for. Um, you've got a higher bar position or a lower bar position, and that depends really on how much flexibility you have in the arms we you can get, get away with. Lower bar position generally takes a bit more shoulder flexibility, and a higher bar position is a bit easier to get to on your shoulders. Um, so neither one of those is wrong or right, it depends what you're after. Um, I'll just show you a normal higher bar position is usually a bit easier for people to get into. So you just want to take a uniform grip. Just take a uniform grip on the bar, so it's equal either side. So for now I'm just going to use the rough part of the bar as the starting point and put my thumbs there, right? Get a nice grip there, step through, and I squeeze my shoulder blades together. And I'm trying to put the bar on top of the cushion of muscle that's created. That's that higher bar position. So let me show you that again. There, come down, squeeze together, and it's on that position there. And I can stand up, step back, try and do that in as little steps as possible. One, uh, two is usually enough. So if I'm in this position, I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together the entire time. And with the bar on your back, you're going to have to let your hips go back a little bit more than you might have with the goblet squat. One thing I'm always trying to do when I do these squats is not allow my knees to collapse in. That's quite a common error. So just keep your knees tracking over your toes. You don't want to come in inwards. And that is the high bar back squat. If you're going for a lower bar position, you have to get a bit deeper under the bar. So you come in there and you try and get onto your rear delts. And what this allows is a little bit more hip involvement and you kind of have to hinge a little bit more. But some people prefer that method to swim. With the depth, I'm always trying to hit hip crease at least in line with the top of my knee. If that's, not, if that's not quite possible straight away, you can build up to that point. Again, try some different stances, a bit wider, a bit narrower, depending on what's best for you. And um, the other thing you can do, if you can't hit a consistent depth, you can use a bench or a chair, something behind you, to make sure you're hitting a consistent level of depth every time if you find that difficult.